Welcome everyone to another episode of the Drive to Succeed podcast. We have our special guest today, the co-founder of Thank You, Daniel Flynn. Thank you so much for being here. It is great to be with you all the way in Dubai. Am I right? From Australia. Yes. Yes. It's great to be there. Absolutely. All right. So just to kick things off, I know that Thank You is a social enterprise that doesn't have any shareholders, no investors, Mm -hmm. and gives away 100% of the profits to work on a single goal, which is to end global poverty. So my question is, what were you guys thinking when you started? Thank you. And you know, how many people have labeled you as crazy? You know, because I, I know it yeah. had me sound bizarre and you know. Yeah. I mean a lot of people called us crazy. Um, you know, maybe maybe some still do. You know, I think that we had this kind of dream born out of born out of this two extremes that we see in our world so the fact that we live in a world that spends collectively 63 trillion dollars on consumer product and then the fact that that same world uh, there is 736 million people living in extreme poverty we look at those two numbers and it just doesn't feel right it feels like you know, how do we have a global system that is making rich richer and a lot of money is being transacted and it feels like the world's poorer left behind and we just dreamt of a different way of working. You know, we thought, imagine if, imagine if there was a brand that tapped into consumer spending to help those living in extreme poverty, like a bridge. And, and I think we were young, we were maybe naive, you know, we, we just thought, let's do it. Let's launch a brand. How hard could it be? Now it turns out it is very hard Um, and and we can get into that. But I think we just started out with this question, well, why not? Um, You know, and I think, you know, for me personally and Justine, my co-founder and my wife, we were both moved in different ways about extreme poverty. You know, she traveled to developing countries from the age of 12. I'd seen videos online and watched stories and we were both moved to the point that we thought, this is so wrong. This must change, you know? And, and, and so that helps us when people say you're crazy, this will never work. We're driven by purpose, not by brand or by product, but by a purpose. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And cause I think there was a viral video where I first uh, saw you uh, cause I, I know, thank you. I was just thinking like, thank you. Is that a company or is it, you know, is it a joke name or something like that? So <laughs> <laughs> cause it's thank you. Like it's a universal word where, you know, it's yeah. gratitude. Right. Um, but I'm just really curious as well, you know, why do you, fa- you know, found or even start with the name? Thank you. And what's the reason behind it? And, you know, yeah, well, at, look, at first we weren't sure, can you even call a brand thank you? You know, and I think that's what we loved about it. We're like, man, like someone called their product Apple and that became like one of the most successful companies in the world. Thank you is a word that you and I say every day. I mean, we all say it globally, different languages, but we say thank you. And um, we love that thought that gratitude is a superpower. You know, gratitude and, and thankfulness is like, I mean, it is... When you, when you live that out in your own personal life, it's transformational. And so we love this idea that the brand would represent gratitude. And we love the thought that everyone's already saying the name of the, of the movement and the idea and the company before they even know about it. And so we just started with thank you. And we think it's a pretty, pretty cool name. Yes, I totally agree. And I think also when you started with your wife, Justin, you don't have any business experience, right? And you were so young, so naive. Uh, how do you get started? I mean, of, obviously, there's a difference between idea and there's a difference between execution. So, you know, how did it all come about? Yeah, I mean, that, you, you know, we saw a great quote once on a wall of a retailer waiting room we were about to present and the wall had this quote that said, an idea isn't worth much. It's values found in its execution. And and we've discovered that to be true every single time. I mean, a lot of people have an idea. You've probably got friends that like, oh yeah. So yeah, I actually thought of Facebook before it was Facebook. Do you know (laughs) what I mean? Like people have ideas all day long, but it's like, well, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and his friends, they went all in on execution. Justine and I and others, we went all in on execution and it's hard. And we started from not knowing anything. Now that turned out to become one of our superpowers. 
honestly. Like it, the, the fact that we didn't know how the industry works, we didn't know what you couldn't ask, that helped us. But at the same time, obviously not knowing, whilst it helped us think differently about the industry, it did, it did mean we literally didn't know what we were doing. And so my call out to anyone who's going from idea to reality is it's good that you don't know everything yet. Sometimes experience can be a blockage, but yeah. you have to be a humble, fast learner. You have to be learning. People often ask like, but how did you, how did you know what to do next? We literally would Google it. Like mm -hmm. what, what, like, what do you need now? Like we're, we're Googling, we're, we're calling people who'd start businesses. We're like, so once you've uh, had the first meeting, what would you send them? A proposal. Great. What would you put in the proposal? Bam, 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 bam. Fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and you have to be humble, fast learners. And, and I think that's hopefully 12 years in, we're still that. We still don't know it all. Uh, we are a long way from it, but we're willing to learn and we're willing to do that quickly. Um, and that helps us refine ideas. It helps us in executing. And finally, you can't do it alone. This isn't just myself and Justine. We have uh, an amazing team. We have amazing advisors, mentors. We've got people throughout 12 years who've inputted into this mission to make it what it is today. Wow. It's really powerful the way you, you frame the answer because I think you, you were around 20 by, by that time, probably after college. Yeah, well, well when, when we started, I was okay. 19. She was, Justine was 21. Um, and we were dating, you know, so we're just like, just starting out. And then, yeah, it's grown. And I said, cause, cause mo most people in your age during that time probably would just like to hang out, you know, with friends and just, you know, earn some money and, you know, just live, uh, you know, the, the lifestyle, especially in Australia, yeah. cause you're, you're pretty much surrounded by, you know, the ocean and surfing and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's really interesting. And, but I'm just really curious as well, how did, um, the business model started? I, I'm sure you call yourself social enterprise. So I assume that it comes from funding, from backing. Is, yeah, okay. is, are you still the same business model since you started until the present? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we are. And so I'm going to use two fists for anyone who's listening. You have to imagine me holding my fist one above the other. If you're watching, you can see this, but essentially the first fist at the bottom, that's the business called thank you group. It makes the products, it markets them. It has all the normal costs that a business would have in running a sustainable business. The one difference, it's owned 100% by our charitable trust. Mm -hmm. Now, if, you, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm now holding one fist above it. You know, the owner is a charitable trust. So that means Justin and I have no equity. There are no shareholders. There are no other investors. And all the money that the company makes uh, after all the costs involved in, you know, running the company and keeping the it going. Yeah, all of that. And you have to have money for the future. You have to have money for a rainy day if something bad happens. After all the costs involved of running a good, sustainable business, every cent left goes up to our charitable trust. And then 100% of what that gets goes out to our impact partners uh, now working in over 30 countries around the world. So that's the model. It's essentially like a business owned by a charity. Uh, yeah. The word social enterprise is the term given to kind of the for-profit business models that are working to solve, uh, you know, society's challenges. Mm, interesting. So you could say it's like nonprofit for business, something like, or the other way around. Yeah, totally. And, and I'll be honest, like, you know, for a lot of people, this is a new box. Everyone understands business. They understand charity, social enterprises in the middle, and it kind of borrows from both. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't take public donations. That's what makes us different to a charity. People don't donate to thank you. But we're all for our mission, which is different to business because most businesses make money, they do some good, their shareholders make money, their owners get more money. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you, that's where we're different. So it kind of borrows ideas from both, um, but it's a revolutionary concept, we think. Yes, and, and interestingly, so you mentioned you have 30 partners all over the, all over, all over the world, right? Impact partners where- these Yeah, are, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> well, 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 not quite 30. So we have, we have, we have 18 partners working in over 30 countries. Mm, okay. Uh, but, you know, close. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for that. And how do you, is there a qualification for them or do you approach them? What's the process looks like with, with this impact partners? And... 
Yeah, there is. So look, we have, um, you know, we have basically found our place and our place is, and we've kind of summed it up in a sentence, you know, we at Thank You Exist to amplify impactful change makers exponentially. So we're looking for change makers, so charities, non-government organizations that think about their work impactfully, which to put it simply is like, they think about it sustainably. They're not there for a quick fix, they're there for deep, well thought through solutions. And we, we look for partners like that. We have uh, 18 amazing partners and then we, we back them, so we fund them. At its core, we're a funder, but we're looking for organizations that are as deeply invested and passionate about the work they're doing as we are in raising the money from consumer spending. And we work and have just funded grants to uh, some of the most remarkable change makers around the world who they don't look at simple solutions. They're looking at complex solutions to helping solve, you know, extreme poverty. I mean, give you a, a sense, you know, we've got a group called D prize D prize. Uh, they, they literally fund it's, it's a prize that any founder, uh, so locally led founder, you know, from parts of Africa can apply to win the prize. They get a grant and that grant will start their organization. Now, thank you. We had $20,000 given to us at the very beginning. D prize is giving 20,000, 40, even more out to partners. Kind of like that one person who did that to thank you. Now we're here. Mm -hmm. D prize is one of our many partners who's there now, you know, providing grants to locally led startups mm -hmm. who are focused on social outcomes in developing countries. We've got splash, you know, they are, um, a group that we've worked with for some time now, and they are working right across um, parts of Africa and through Southeast Asia, helping mm -hmm. to provide clean access or access to clean water and sanitation uh, for school children uh, in whole districts. We work with One Heart in Nepal. Uh, they are helping solve really complex issues around mothers giving birth safely. Wow. And I could go on. I mean, we have partners working in the mental health space, working in, in, in nutrition and in health, working in economic empowerment. Our job, I mean, we literally think they are the heroes in this story. Yeah. You know, they're the heroes. They're doing the hard, real work. We're just trying to get money to back them and help amplify the change that they're already making. Interesting. And that's why I believe one, <laughs> that's why your name is around thank you. So it's like you're thanking them for them to make more better impact and, you know. Interestingly, and also when you guys started, I'm just really curious because if it's a social enterprise and you receive an initial backing, how do you, you know, hire a team? How do you even, you know, approach someone like, you know, can you help us market this product or this mission, this movement, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a challenge at the start. There's a term we use in Australia. And, and look, maybe you guys use it too. It's the term bootstrapping. So mm -hmm. a bootstrap startup, it's like you, you kind of, you start it off energy and off passion and you don't have the money you need. Um, that's kind of how we found it. Thank you. And, and so we, we actually all started as volunteers. So we were all volunteering to get this idea off the ground. But we discovered that to be honest, everyone wants to make a difference. Most companies, most individuals. And so, Really our job at Thank You became, how do we connect everyone? How do we partner everyone? And how do we, how do we do it in a way that an accounting firm can do what they always do, you know, whether that's auditing or whatever, but they could do it for an organization that existed to make an, an impact. And so we would often get discounted rates with them or uh, people were willing to volunteer. And once we started selling enough product in the market. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, we sell consumer product. We have over 50 products in the market in Australia. Uh, we also have some in New Zealand. And those products exist all for the end of extreme poverty. So hand wash, sanitizer, body lotions, really good consumer product. Yes. And I think that is once sales started to pick up, we were then able to put enough, uh, put aside money to pay staff. You know, we now have a team of 30. Um, we, we were able to put aside a little bit of money for marketing, but then when we go to market, you know, we try and, and, and take gigantic revolutionary steps that basically never have enough budget to really succeed, but rely on people, a movement to pick up that idea and help run with it. Yes, I totally agree with that. And I didn't know that you already branched out to 50 different, you know, products, because I know you started with the water, right? Because yeah. 
with clean water <laughs> that you, you brought yeah. to Africa. Um, so obviously, if you're running sanitizers and you know these products, this has been a huge amount of chunk during the pandemic, right? So how does it affect your overall operations? And yeah, yeah, well, it's an interesting point. I mean, the world's in a really difficult position. You know, I think what COVID and the pandemic has done. It has flipped our world upside down. It's kind of stopped it in its tracks. Um, what we've seen is we've seen thank you play out, the whole idea play out to two vast extremes. So really quickly, our partners working in developing countries, they're at all time low, like donations are dropping. Uh, government funding going to them is, is going to the pandemic. And so some of their projects, they have to stop. You know, um, there, there are estimates of up to 130 million people in developing countries right now on the brink of famine, you know, increase in the end of extreme poverty. In fact, literally this week, um, literally this week, I mean, Bill and Melinda Gates came out with a whole lot of studies, not future predictions, but actual as of right now, there is a 7% increase in those living in extreme poverty, right? So we're talking another 37 million people that just went back in. Um, that's projected to grow up into the hundred or more million people. Um, mm -hmm one of their statements they made was that we've been set back in 25 weeks. We've been set back about 25 years. And they were speaking to vaccine coverage, which they say is a good proxy for health systems functioning. I mean, you know, World Food Programme is saying that there are a quarter of a billion, so 250 million people which could suffer from acute hunger within the next few months. Mm -hmm. Now, in that same time period where you're hearing these statistics, we have sold more product than we've ever sold. Uh, for those who can watch this right now, I'm going to hold up one of our products, hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Now we have the number one hand wash in Australia. This hand sanitizer though has become like liquid gold um, in the space of a few months. Now for context of this statistic, in 12 years, we've raised $6.9 million, actually just on $7 million for our impact partners. And in the space of the last few months in the pandemic, we raised a further 10 million dollars so we are literally i mean we have seen profit records sales records like we have never experienced and i think what's really interesting is that in one sense extreme poverty is going from bad to worse but our sales are going from good to great and i think this is why we go thank you's working in two of the smallest countries on the planet imagine imagine if we could get it a lot further than that today because we think the world needs well not just thank you as an idea it needs many many ideas like it but uh, we really want to bring this to the global table wow i didn't know that it was a huge impact during the past six seven months and like the saying goes you know for some it's a curse for some it's a blessing and with your blessing you're giving other people the chance to live you know a healthy safety life with the clean water with, the, with your products and everything all right, I, I'm excited. And also one of the things that you mentioned um, during your, your videos um, is that to get, to get the results that you never get got before, you have to be prepared to do something the world never seen before. And I know that for the past 12 years, you're working on Australia and New Zealand, but why have you not yet go outside from that you know, small country downside? You know? yeah. yeah, well, look, we... We thought 12 years ago that we'd be taking this idea to the world within like maybe one year. You know, we're like, like we're 19, we're 21, we're like, give us one year and this thing's gonna be global. But it turns out when you compete against the biggest companies in the world, even in Australia and New Zealand, I mean, we, we kind of, we walked into what became the battle of our lives for over a decade, trying to prove the model, trying to win kind of neck to neck with these really, really big established organizations. And, you know, thanks to a movement of people in Australia and New Zealand, you know, consumers, we've been able to not just survive, but now raise over $17 million. And that's why today we're announcing that um, we think it's time for thank you to go to the world. And we kind of figured a way to do it. It's unconventional, mm -hmm. um, but it's and also- I mean, that it's way? <laughs> so, um, you know, we have uh, literally, and I'm trying to think what, what, what day this podcast goes live. Um, from your perspective. But I know that uh, as we record this right now, we're literally a couple of days out from our biggest launch in our history. Now, 
you're in one of the very first kind of, and we're having this conversation about the launch as we, as this goes live, I imagine our campaign's already live. So I'm just going to speak openly about it as if it's happened, yeah. even though we're a couple of nights off. <laughs> but when we launch, we're launching a video to the world. And the video to the world is a call out to the world to say that we're stuck. We're in a really bad spot. You know, like quarter of a, you know, of a billion people, you know, suffering from acute hunger literally in the next few months. And yet thank you has just made $10 million and we're not the only ones. I mean, a lot of companies have got rich off hand sanitizer and off us consumers spending and panic buying. And so thank you as a team, we had an idea. What if we went to the world today? And so today we're inviting the whole world to join us to help. And the hashtag for this campaign is hashtag thank you to the world. It's a double meaning of gratitude, but help, help get thank you to the world. And in this campaign, we're, we're inviting two groups. Uh, we're inviting two of the biggest uh, product companies on the planet, uh, P&G and Unilever. In fact, in the video you guys will see um, in our launch video, we've sent them two giant wooden crates with an, a, a stamp on the front. This is an invitation to change the world. So we've sent one to each of them. And we've also sent an invitation to another nine of their competitors. And what we're saying is that We've competed with companies like you for over a decade, but today it's 2020 business as usual is out the window. And we think the world needs to forge bold new paths forward. So instead of competing, we're inviting you to help make and distribute thank you products through your hundreds of combined factories and help get this idea to over 190 countries. So we've just invited them, but we've also invited a second group, which is you, it's me, it's we, the consumer, because we know that to change a system and to change the way the world works, it's going to take everyone. It's not just the decisions of a few at the top. We need, we need the consumer. We need the people. I mean, thank you is a story of a people built brand. And we're asking from people all around the world in whatever language works for them on whatever platform works for them to post four words. I'm in a you. Tag PNG, tag Unilever, hashtag thank you to the world. <laughs> and, and this is bold, but it's a call out because we think the world is in a tough spot and it needs bold solutions today. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're wondering, how does this whole campaign end? Well, in the first week of November, uh, we are posting onto one of the largest digital billboards in the world found in Times Square, New York City. Wow. We are going to post on that billboard. Thanks to a guy who's generously given us a discount rate on the billboard. Um, he owns it. Uh, we're going to post which partners in. Maybe, maybe it's Unilever. Maybe it's PNG. Maybe it's one of the other nine. But all we know is this. We need one partner to help us make and distribute this to the world. And, you know, if you're wondering how the partnership works, it's the same as, you know, Adidas who make and distribute Kanye's brand Yeezy. Yeah. So Yeezy designed the shoe, but it's actually Adidas that make and distribute it to the planet. Um, and there's a heap of other examples. It turns out like these sorts of partnerships happen all the time. And we thought, why not have one for a product yeah. that exists to help end extreme poverty? Wow. I just want to have little seconds to let it sink for our audience as well, because how massive this campaign is and not the reason for the campaign, but really what is the goal and purpose behind? Thank you. Yeah. And even right now, my, you know, my, my hands are getting goosebumps just listening to your story. And I'm just really curious as well, uh, now that you're pitching to these nine you know, competitors, either PNG, Unilever. So the business model works is that you supply them the products and they just co-brand and co-label it and something like that. Well, well, it's a little, it's kind of one step further. It's a really deep partnership. And so it kind of, the way it works is like, you know, they have factories they can make products and distribute them right now in over 100, 190 countries, depending which mm -hmm. one. We've got a brand, thank you. We've got a product, a formula. Yeah. You know, we know what, I mean, people love thank you, the actual product. I mean, we, we have the number one hand wash in Australian supermarkets, the number one. We're this little social movement that people love the fragrance, they love how it feels, they love the packaging. And so we've kind of got the secret sauce we're looking for the partner to make and distribute that around the world. The technical term for those who want to understand more, and you can read up on our website, thankyou.co to kind of deeply understand how it works. 
but um, the technical term for this sort of partnership is called a license agreement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Starbucks have a yeah. brand and they have coffee, but they've given a license to Nestle to make and distribute the Starbucks coffee pod, yeah. the little pod. With the recipe into, and with the packaging. And... Yep. And they've got the license to take that into retail stores all around the world. So I've got some Starbucks coffee pods at home. It's Starbucks is the brand, but Nestle actually got it there. So that license agreement, interesting stat, I think, you know, Nestle may have paid something like $7 billion. Don't <laughs> quote me, I should double check that. But yes. they paid billions of dollars for the chance to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Yeezy example is interesting. I read an article saying that, you know, Yeezy make about 140 million US dollars a year from the partnership. These are the sorts of things we're looking to do because yes. I can tell you right now, what could thank you do with 140 million or billions of dollars? Well, I can tell you right now, we can back more impactful change makers who are working to solve extreme poverty, yeah. you know, and during a pandemic and when the world's upside down together, we can solve this injustice that shouldn't exist. Interesting. And, and you also have a way to you know, track where the money is going, right? And you have like an app. Yeah. Well, it's a, look, that's a great one. Now, we, we have. We have had that app for years um, and, and we've had it in Australia. We've actually strategically made the call not to take that app to the world in this next move. And um, it's, it's, it's a deep reason why. The, the, we've just changed our giving model. So the way we've given for over a decade is very much to a partner. Let's say you're the charity. We say, right, you know, Danielle, how many wells are you building? Give me the GPS coordinates of the wells. Yeah. I want a photo of every well. And I want to take that photo of that GPS coordinate and I want to post it back to our community. Now, our consumers love it. We do too. It's a really cool idea. But the problem is that our partners are then focusing on photos of wells yeah. And that's actually not true impact. Wells do need to exist, but true impact is, did a community that we're there to serve and help serve, did their fundamental health get better? So did diarrhea rates drop? Or did you know, the infant mortality rate drop? Now, we need, and by we, I mean the whole world, needs partners working in developing countries focused on true impact, not just taking photos of activity, and it's like, thank you. We've been like, we want impact, but, but give us photos of activity. Yeah, yeah. And we've had to make the call as a responsible funder to say, well, if we truly believe in the end of extreme poverty, we need to take some of the kind of burdens off our partners that we've put on. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way we can put it is we need them to do the work that matters, yes. not the work that helps us as consumers feel better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I like tracking. Yeah, because um, so I... Yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, because I was just well, thinking. I'm... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you go. It's on you. It's on you. Yeah. So, no, I was just thinking because some of the companies would love. They have, um, you know, a, a CSR or like a charity, you know, charity, you know, uh, initiative. But in return, it promotes their company. Like, look at look at us. We're doing this good in in the community, in in you know, in a global scale. And sometimes it can be, you know, framed as not authentic. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, it depends how long you want to go on this podcast. We could talk for hours on this one point because I think that what we don't realize, and, and thank you, we, on our website, you can dive deep into this, but we talk about three challenges to the end of extreme poverty. Now, the first challenge is 736 million people living in extreme poverty. And now what they're saying is that could be up to 100 million more. So that's challenge number one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our focus. But challenge number two is the funding gap. There is an estimated $2.5 trillion annual funding gap between now and 2030 to help end extreme poverty. So that's about $25 trillion. Now that's a huge number. Yeah. But if we're spending $63 trillion on consumer product a year, 10 years at $630 trillion, now 22 is not looking as big. You know what I mean? Yes. So, so, so there is a funding thing and we need to help fund but the third issue that we've really highlighted, and you can read more on our website about this, is donor dysfunction. Now, it turns out, and we were so shocked to discover this, but it, there's a great study that was done that, that really looked deeply into what holds charities back, what stops them doing the great work they do. Now, 
I would have thought government corruption, theft, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it turns out that theft and corruption accounted for only 4% of barriers or hurdles for charities. 46% of issues come from the donor. Now that blew our mind. And, and, and we, at first we didn't want to believe it, but the more we looked at the statistic, we read behind it, we're like, oh yeah, we've done that before. We've delayed funding or we've changed this or we've wanted them to do this or that. And we looked through it and it was like holding up a mirror to ourselves and being like, oh, we're a little part of the problem. And that's not the goal of any person or funder. And so to your point, I do think a lot of people give with strings attached or they're trying to make a difference and show their consumers. I think we're all going to have to take a step up a bit and find different ways. Um, you know, and for us, track your impact stopping is one of the small ways that we're looking to really better partner with impactful change makers and not hold them back, you know, not be part of the 46% of the problems that they face. So look, that's a big topic. There's a whole yeah. bunch of reading on our website about it. Yeah. But um, I think it's a really critical thing for us to understand. Great. So thank you so much for highlighting that. And all right. So for our listeners and our audience who's listening or watching this, you can check the website and there's a hashtag as well, uh, which is thank you to the world, right? To, to support this movement and yeah. hashtag I am in, are you, right? Um, PNG or the Unilever. Unilever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Interesting. And also I, I noticed you also uh, have a book on your website and which is called yeah. chapter one. What's the reason behind it? And is it like a, some form of marketing or to fund more, you know, yeah. the, the business or. Yeah. So, so uh, chapter one was launched a few years back and it's the first chapter of the thank you story and all the profit we make from the book is there to fund chapter two, the future of thank you. So we've said to our supporters, hey, if you want to help thank you more, more than just purchasing the products to make a difference, you can actually help fund the growth of thank you. We launched a campaign when we launched the book. It's called the chapter one campaign. And we've asked people to buy the book. And, and when we launched it, it was a pay what you want price. Now, four years on, you, it's just a normal retail price, jump online, you buy it. But for four years, we had it at pay what you want. And some people paid like five cents in our currency. Some paid up to $50,000. That's the most paid for one copy. But we've raised over $2.4 million, sold 140,000 copies of chapter one, which it turns out is a lot because a best-selling book is about 5,000 copies. Um, so the book has sold a lot. Um, we'd love people to read it, um, you know, because it takes you deeper into this journey. You know, people have been really surprised. And our goal with chapter one, the book, isn't just to raise money, but it's to help you on your journey. You know, we've learned some things along the way. Now, we don't know everything at all. I mean, we're one chapter into our story. Yeah. But chapter one is about saying everything we've learned, we give it to you on your journey. And so we'd encourage if you're a change maker or if you're in the, literally, if you're trying to make an idea or a reality, this book is for you. So right now we actually have copies in warehouses all around the world and people can buy it online. We'll ship it, we'll ship it to your house. Um, and, and, you know, our hope is that the true impact of thank you will not just be the money we've raised as an organization, but maybe the many other organizations that have been started or have, you know, helped kind of to be kind of transformed in their thinking by reading chapter one, by following the thank you journey. Wow. Thank you so much. And do you have a campaign website? So before my last and final question, I just wanted to ask you, Daniel, we have a website where people can, you know, share, you know, uh, know more about the mission, about the movement, about the campaign. And is it, you know, uh, live and where is it? <laughs> Tell us yeah, more about so where we can find you. And you know. Yeah. So the website is thank you.co. So www.thankyou.co. On our website, you'll see everything you need to know about the campaign. You can find chapter one, the book. Uh, you can learn more about our impact model. Um, and, you know, we really hope that you will join us on this idea and this movement um, to take thank you to the world and increase the dollars raised. I mean, we've, we've raised $17 million, but that's from two of the smallest countries on the planet. Yeah. If everyone else joins us, this will become hundreds of millions, if not more. 
I almost want to say a word starting with the letter B, <laughs> but you know, that'll be one day, but let's go from millions, tens of millions to hundreds of millions. Of millions yeah. like, you know, that's chapter two and then chapter three, we can worry about the rest. So yeah, we'd love to have people on the journey with us. All right. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Daniel. I just want to acknowledge you for sharing your story with us, your journey, and a simple idea that labeled you as crazy 12 years ago, you know, and, and seeing thank you right now and the impact you're bringing on and multi multiplying with your partners. I'm just so happy to get to speak to you on an intimate level on this podcast as well. So my last and final question to you is if everything is stripped away from you, so 10 years from now, all the things are going to start all over again. Obviously, you have your experience, you have connections, but you know, it, it, thank you doesn't you know, become a reality that you were thinking it's supposed to be. What would be your main drive to succeed? No one has ever asked me that question. And that is, it's a, it's a beautiful question because I think if everything was stripped away, I think the thing that took me so long to realize is we can live by a trap and the trap is that we think success is what everyone else thinks of us. And we can try and live to other people's expectations and live to their definitions of success. I mean, success for me is like to be a great husband, to be a great father and to make sure the work I do every day makes an impact bigger than just me, you know, and if thank you doesn't get to where I really believe it could, and for Justine and I, that would be hard to, to see a dream not realized. But if we would be a great husband and a great wife and great parents to our kids and make sure that the work we do each day is, it doesn't just impact our little family, but it makes it an impact bigger than us. And I think that is success. And I think there is a lot of um, joy and peace found in that. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't underestimate the power we all have when we make sure that our day-to-day -day jobs and our lives, you know, are there to serve others and to help others at, a, at an even bigger uh, impact than just our own family. Wow. Thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing that last moment. I, I know some of our audience can feel the sincerity in the heart that you put in, into thank you and, you know, being a founder and being a husband and, you know, um, as someone who's a change maker, I, I believe you're doing something good. And I believe this, you know, this episode will is something that people would be willing to back them up and back your movements. And the reason thank I'm you. doing this as well on a short notice. And for that, I thank you so much, uh, Daniel, and see you on the next episode. Well, my friend, thank you so much for the interview. And I tell you what, you thank you for moving quick. You are one of the first interviews. Like I'm literally like, if this campaign goes well for the next few weeks, it'll be interviews every day, but you're one of the first. Thanks for jumping so quick. Uh, maybe we loop back one day at the end, see what happens, who knows, but thank you so much for, 